Okay, welcome to another video. So about two weeks ago, I checked out a new Arch-based distribution called CyberOS, which is built using Qt Quick. Since that video, there's been some changes in the team with some of the members going off to start their own distribution called Cutefish OS, which Manjaro has now also picked up and are gonna be making a community edition of it, which is what we're gonna be checking out today. So reading on from the about page of their website, it says Cutefish OS is a Linux desktop operating system that runs the Cutefish desktop environment developed by us. We have also developed a series of system applications to ensure that the overall design language is unified. Our goal is to provide users with a comfortable interface design, a better user experience, and meet the needs of use in various scenarios. Now, if you go onto their website and go onto the download page, you'll notice it's not ready yet, so it's coming soon. But from what I've been told by the people working on it, it's gonna be based on Ubuntu. So if you want to go ahead and try the desktop yourself, it's probably worth going and downloading the Manjaro spin. Or if you're running an Arch-based system, you can also go ahead and grab Cutefish from Pac-Man. So I'll leave a link down below for the Cutefish OS website, as well as the place where you can go ahead and download the development ISO of Manjaro's Cutefish. And with that being said, let's jump into the live environment and get this installed. Okay, so here we are in the live environment. Everything's looking very nice, but we'll wait until we're fully installed before we start taking a proper look at things. As per usual, we're going to be installing this natively, but for those of you who like to skip the installation parts of these videos, there will be a timestamp down below which will take you straight to the installed desktop. So the installer is of course Calamares, and the first thing we need to do is change our language from American English over to British English, and then go to the next step. Europe London is looking all good, and now we're on the keyboard layout and it's already got English UK selected. I'm going to use the box below just to make sure it's all working, and then go to the next step. Okay, so we've got two options here. We can do the erase disk or do manual partitioning. We're gonna go for the first choice and see what options it gives us for our swap partition. Okay, interesting. I've never actually seen this on Calamares before where it also gives you the option of the file system when you're choosing how to configure your swap. So I think what we'll do is we'll do swap with Hibernate. But while we're in here, let's see what other options we also have. Interesting, so I think what I might do is also test out with ButterFS and see if that all goes smoothly. So we now have one partition for our EFI, one partition for our swap with Hibernate, and then we have our root partition using ButterFS as our file system. Next. Okay, user account time. So we're going to call this one QD, type in our password, and we're going to use the same password for the administrator account, but we're not going to log in automatically. That way we can see how the Login screen's all been set up when we first boot up. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video now and come back once this has finished. Right, so the installation has complete and it's no surprise to me that it was done incredibly quickly, much like all of the other versions of Manjaro that we've checked out on the channel so far. What we're gonna do now is reboot and check out our fresh installed Manjaro with the Cutefish desktop. Right, so we've just booted up for the first time and we have reached the login screen, which doesn't look too bad. So at the top left, we have where we can select what desktop we're gonna be booting into then have the time at the top right hand corner and then centrally we have our user account where we can input our password and log in and then just beneath that we have suspend reboot and shut down buttons okay so here we are our freshly installed desktop and already i do quite like the way it looks but then i do have a strong preference for a dock and panel kind of layer on my desktops i'm getting very strong mac os kind of vibes here the same sort of vibes that i got when i checked out jing os not too long ago so I think what we'll do to start off with is just open up a terminal and see if there's any updates we need to get, and then we'll start taking a look around. So there were no updates we needed to get, so we should be good to go. I also quickly installed HTOP and NeoFetch so we can get a bit of information from NeoFetch and check how much RAM we're using on a fresh boot in just a moment. Now, as we are using Manjaro, your default shell is, of course, a ZSH, and the default display server is X11. Let's jump into NeoFetch and see a bit of information, and then we'll start taking a look around this desktop. So package-wise, we've got 693, of course, all native packages. The DE says Cutefish, and the window manager is KWIM. So let's start by having a quick run-through of the desktop itself. So we've got a dock at the bottom and the panel at the top. And in our top panel, we have our clock, power, and volume, all being one button, and then clicking that will then open a kind of control center with a few more options there. And I can imagine that would also be quite good for touch input. So in this, we have our Wi-Fi, our Bluetooth, dark mode switching, display, and then we also have our volume slider. And then we also get a little bit of information about our current charge and our battery, as well as the date and time just beneath it. Now I've purposefully used my laptop today so we can make sure Bluetooth and everything is all working. So let's click the Bluetooth button and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, let's see what happens when we click the actual Bluetooth button. 
So it's using Blue Man there. So what we need to do is enable Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we should be able to. OK, so that button doesn't appear to be set up properly at the moment, but we do have access to our Bluetooth right here. So shell Bluetooth get enabled automatically. I'll enable it automatically. That way when we do a reboot, we can see that if it does actually work with that or not, but we'll check that out in just a moment. And while we're in here, let's also test out the little dark mode toggle here to switch between the light and dark themes. So we're currently on the very nice light theme. Now with a single click, we can then switch over to the dark theme, which I do think I'll probably prefer. But for now, we'll leave it on the light theme because there is an appearance section in the settings that we'll go to in just a moment and see how that's all set up as well. Now, while we had a terminal open, I noticed that we had a little bit of information pop up at the top left of our panel that I was hoping to be a global menu, but it doesn't appear to be. So it appears to just be the focused Windows sort of title. And with a right click, we can close it. I think in the future, I'd very much like that to be a global menu. I think it would sort of fit in with the whole desktop and the user experience that they're going for here. But for now, it's just a single right click to then close the application window. Now, before we check out how the docs all set up, let's do a right click on a desktop and see what options we have. So we can do a new folder, select all, open in a terminal and then just get to the properties. So we don't appear to have like a right click and change desktop. Now let's see if we do have desktop icons though. So let's make a new folder and just call it test. And there we go. So we do have full desktop icons all working as one would expect. And now we can just right click that again and go to properties. And then we get a bit of information about whatever we have stored on our desktop or in our file manager. So let's just delete that one for now. And now let's make our way down to the bottom of the screen and check out this dock. So we have a little icon here for the actual Cutefish OS, and that is going to be your launcher. So it's clicking that will then open up your application launcher with your search bar at the top. Now this is a minimal Manjaro ISO, so you aren't going to find a whole lot of applications installed out of the box. But we'll go through them in a minute and we'll also install a few more applications and see how it handles all of those. So what can we do with our dock? So it appears to be a nice little floating one. And let's open up a new application and see how it works with pinning new apps. So a left super at the moment isn't assigned to that. So we're going to click it and we're going to open up. Let's say what don't we have there? So we have Kate, which is the text editor from KDE. And now with a right click, we can close the window, pin it or then just open Kate. So that appears to have opened a new window. I wonder if that's the same with all applications. Let's open up our file manager and now let's also go file manager again. Okay, so that appears to open a new instance every time. I think once the sort of desktop matures a bit more, it'd probably be better to have the labels as like open new window, open new instance, etc. But there we go. So it doesn't appear to be a whole lot of other options that you can do without getting into the system settings for the dock, but we'll go into that in just a moment as well and we don't have any sort of right clicking on the dock itself. So it's all going to be controlled from the system settings. And speaking of the system settings, let's go through and see how this is all set up as well. And a lot of this we've probably already seen before, but we are on the laptop now, so we can check things out like a battery as well. So a user account, pretty standard stuff. We can add a new user and we can see that we are currently logged on and then sort of expanding that, we can change it to automatic login and let's do that to see if that's working. So it's going to ask you for a password prompt. And then when we do a reboot, we should automatically get straight to the desktop. Next up, we have display. OK, this is slightly different. So last time we checked this out, we didn't have the option for actually changing the resolution, which we do appear to have here. We have a brightness slider and then there's our refresh rate. And then we also have rotation. So if you was on like a device that had an accelerometer or you sort of change the position of things, perhaps it will be set up to do that automatically. But at the moment, we should just be able to click that and then change the actual rotation of the screen. And now let's go back. So it does say enabled there. So I guess doing that won't let us change anything. There we go. So that's just going to disable that entirely. And we have some indicators here. So what does that do? OK, so that just lets you go to the other screen that you have currently connected and then sort of do individual settings on that one as well. And as we're on the laptop and a capture card, it's going to come up as two displays. Let's scroll down. And then again, we just have the scaling for things like 100 all the way to 200 with 25, 50 and 175. OK, it didn't like us checking out anything in network at the moment. Obviously, this is all very new and very much a work in progress. So things like this are to be expected. Let's try one more time before we give up on network. OK, we're not going to worry about network for the moment. We are going to jump straight into the appearance, though. 
So like I said before, here's where we can change back to light and dark themes. And we also have the options of accent colors. And then we have dim the wallpaper in dark theme. Interesting. Let's see what that does. So let's go to dark. Okay, interesting. So it really has dimmed that wallpaper. So if we disable that once more, you can notice that the wallpaper is back to the sort of standard brightness that it was set at. And then again, clicking that will then dim it. Interesting. Okay, let's go back to the light. And now we have our accent colors. And while we're here, we'll just test out the green one. And then as you can see, it's going to change anything with the accent color that was blue to the nice new green color. Font wise, we are using Noto Sans and Deja Vu Sans Motto. And we can also change the size of the font. So let's go small, medium, right? So it's not going to change it on the fly. So let's open up our file manager. Okay, let's see what other sort of sizes we get. So we've seen this one before. Let's go to medium and now let's close that and reopen it. And then we should have a larger size font. And now if we go all the way to huge and then open up our file manager once more. There we go. We can see it's increased the size of things quite a bit. And I'm going to leave it on small and then we'll go into background now. So we've got quite a few nice colorful wallpapers here at the moment. And then we also have color interesting so this is just going to change it from a solid from like a background to a solid color and i think those colors are the same potentially as the ones that we have in our accent colors no they're slightly different i think okay they're quite similar so we could then change it to an orange to a pink or we could just leave it on the default of picture which i'm probably going to do and while we're in here let's check out one more wallpaper with a darker theme enabled and there we go. So it is a very nice looking sort of desktop distribution. Let's go back to the light and then back to the default, which I don't mind. Again, it's very kind of Apple-esque. They use a lot of these sorts of wallpapers on their sort of desktops and tablets. Now in dock, here is where we've got a few options here. We don't appear to have any options for auto hide though. So at the moment we can only change the position of the screen. So either left, bottom or right. Let's check it out on the left and then the right and then back to the bottom so i'm going to imagine then when anything interacts with that it's just going to stay on your screen so if we full screen an application you are going to be losing quite a bit of the actual applications windows of real estate but i'm sure that sort of feature will be implemented as time progresses now in language we are currently set to united states let's just chuck that on united kingdom and now let's check out how it's going to display our battery so it doesn't really show us too much other than the current charge, so we're fully charged. It does let us know the maximum capa capacity though of our battery and mine is 83. But other than that, we don't appear to have any other options for the power management. So we've currently only got the battery there and it's looking quite limited in what you can do. And then we have the about page where we can get a little bit of information about our hardware and our machine. Okay, I think what we're gonna do is quickly run through the default applications and then we'll try and install a few applications of our own and see how it all works. So we have the Bluetooth manager, we have the nice little calculator there and all of these applications for the most part will have the nice rounded corners. We then have our file manager, we have settings, we have Firefox, which is of course our default web browser. And then we have the firewall, Manjaro's user guide, Manjaro's welcome screen, Manjaro settings manager, where you can get into things like your kernel, your language packages, and all of that good stuff. Kate, the text editor, console is your terminal, add and remove packages. So we'll use this in a moment to install some more packages, but for now we'll leave that one minimized. We then have pulse audio preferences, pulse audio volume control, and then QPDF view. So I think what we'll do then is we'll go ahead and install a few applications and see how that's all working. And as we are using ButterFS, I'm quite intrigued to see if we can install TimeShift and get the vols all working with snapshots on there. So let's go ahead and go for TimeShift. Let's grab that. And let's also go ahead and grab Flatback. We'll test out a couple of Flatback applications and make sure that's all integrating with our application launcher. And we'll also grab GIMP and we'll get Caden Live as a flat pack. In fact, before we do this, let's do a reboot and see how much RAM we're using. And then we'll install some new applications. So we've just started back up and I've just realized we did set auto login in the settings itself, but it doesn't appear to have worked and taken us straight to the desktop. Right, so we've just logged back in and opened up HTOP to see how much RAM we're using on a fresh boot before we make any additional changes to our system. As we can see there, it's not the lightest ever, but it's not super heavy either. Just under 800 MB at 777. 
And there is of course our swap partition just beneath that that we'll test out with hibernation in just a moment. Okay, so we've installed our new applications which were Timeshift, GIMP and Flatpak. And I've also gone ahead and installed the Flatpak version of Caden Live, done a reboot. And as you can see, unfortunately, as it currently stands, it isn't properly integrating our Flatpak applications in our application launcher. And let's just do a quick search of it to make sure. No, so what we're gonna do is open up our terminal and just make sure we can at least launch it from the terminal. Of course, this is all very early days and I'm sure all of this will be ironed out. So we're just going to type in flatpak run org.cadenlive and now that should actually open up the Cadenlive application. There we go. So everything's working apart from it's not properly integrating it within our system. Let's close that back up. And now what I want to do is open up Timeshift and see if that's all set up to work with snapshots. So we're going to go ahead and open up Timeshift. It's going to ask us for our password. And we of course chose ButterFS in the installation. So let's see if we can do full system snapshots with ButterFS. Finish. Okay, everything appears to have worked. Let's test it out by creating one. Brilliant, and there we go. So it's all set up to work if you're using ButterFS with Timeshift as well. Now what I want to do to sort of wrap things up is do a couple of tests for hibernation and things like sleep. Right, so we've got a couple of applications open here which we are going to be using to test out sleep and hibernate which are their calculator, terminal, and file manager. Now, before we do that though, as we've got their file manager open, it's a very simple file manager with some navigation buttons at the top left, full path right there, and then pressing this button will let you change the icons to the list view. And we can also arrange by name, date, and size. We have our places to the left, as well as your connected devices like USBs. And all your windows do have four-way split, or you can split things side by side. So now what we're gonna do is test this out with suspend or sleep using the GUI but we'll have to do hibernation in the terminal because there won't be a GUI option for it. So we're going to press the power button and we're going to go straight to suspend. And I'll just hit enter on my keyboard and there we go and we have started back up with the same applications. We're now going to do the same thing with hibernate which is a little bit trickier than suspend because it puts your computer in a very low powered state and suspends everything to disk. Now, as I said, we don't have the GUI option, so we're going to open up a terminal and we're going to use system CTL hibernate to get into that hibernated state. So my machine's now powering up again, and hopefully all of those applications are right where we left them, letting us know that hibernation has worked. Perfect. So the Bluetooth, which is using Blue Man, does appear to be working and finding devices that are currently around me. So there's one of my phones there, the Galaxy S9. But like we saw in the beginning, unfortunately, this toggle here isn't set up to really control anything as it currently stands and I think that is probably where I'm going to wrap up with my first look of Manjaro's Cute Fish Community Edition and there we have it so actually all in all I've had a really fun time just running through Cute Fish the desktop on Manjaro's new Community Edition so of course it is still very very early days for Cute Fish and Cute Fish OS as a whole but there are a lot of things here to get excited about of course there are features and things that are missing that are going to need to be implemented but i do believe as things are ironed out in the future it's going to be a very fun usable desktop for many people to use now if you want to give it a go yourself i'd probably just recommend hitting the link in the description below to download manjaro's development iso bearing in mind it is a minimal iso so you aren't going to find a whole lot of packages and applications installed out of the box but you will have things like your web browser text editor etc but if you want to install things for media playback and stuff, you're going to have to go ahead and do that yourself. Of course, you can also, like I said in the beginning, if you're running Arch, you can also just install the Cute Fish package and that should grab everything you need to have a little play around with things. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and also join the Discord. There's a link in the description below. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.